Hey everyone, I want to quickly talk about a killer feature in PyCharm Professional Edition, which is integration with Jupyter Notebooks. So if you're like me, you take the I in your IDE very seriously. The I stands for integrated. And what I find myself doing a lot lately is using PyCharm for all of my Python development, except for Jupyter Notebooks, in which case I open up a web browser and I sort of stumble my way through it. So I started looking into PyCharm's Jupyter integration and I was surprised at how good it was considering I'd really never heard or seen it. Um, so I'd like to just talk, uh, walk you through it quickly here and just talk about what I really like as the standout features. So here I have a little demo project and I have a Hello PyCharm notebook. It's an incomplete notebook, maybe a notebook that one of your colleagues would just send you. Um, so when I open it up, it gets rendered directly in PyCharm. So in the middle window here, it's rendering the notebook just as if you were running in a browser. And this is flanked by various toolbars, which I will show you. But if you're familiar with PyCharm, then these should look familiar, familiar to you. So right off the bat, what I really like about this is that it retains the theme and syntax highlighting of my IDE. So it's a dark theme. I don't have to download a Jupyter Notebook theme to use it. Um, the syntax highlighting for the cells, the code cells in my notebook is identical to if I was just running a script, same exact color uh, settings and everything. Um, right off the bat, you'll see that the first cell up here is a markdown cell and it's rendering an image, which is this uh, happy.png that I just have locally. So, at first glance, it has full parity with PyCharm as if it were running in your browser. Now, when I click into a cell, uh, it goes into the edit mode. So you can see I can edit the, uh, the markdown source. And all of the keyboard shortcuts for the notebook are the same. So control enter to run a cell, A to insert cells above, B to insert below, DD to delete cells. Um, I can enter a cell by hitting enter, which points this turns green. I can run a cell with control enter. And I hit again escape to go back into the um, navigation mode. So if you're already used to these keyboard shortcuts, um, good news, you'll it'll be really easy to get started with PyCharm. But on top of that, what I really enjoy is that all of my PyCharm keyboard shortcuts still work. And these, you know, I've spent years perfecting. It's like a second language to me. So for example, I can go into the cell and I could press, um, I don't know, control, control uh, L to search. So I could search across the notebook. Um, I can do control W to smart select. So smart select is a really great feature where you press it once and it selects, it's like intelligent selection. I press it again, it goes to the next like logical selection. Uh, so lots of these keyboard shortcuts, I really, really appreciate being here in my notebook now. Um, another great thing is, <clears throat> All the power of PyCharm to do uh, debugging is in here. So you can see that it's telling me that there's no module named pandas installed. And I'm gonna click install it. And so rather than me having to manage my own virtual environment, I'm leaning on PyCharm's virtual environment management. So this is a poetry project. And you can see that it's installing the pandas package. Now, if we come down here into the tool window, you can see all of the packages installed in the environment. Um, just all the, the nice package management you get in PyCharm, uh, it extends to the notebook. Uh, so now what I can do is run the cell and it's rendered a data frame. So this is pretty similar to how it works in the browser, but this is a little more dynamic, I think. Um, so I could change, for example, the page size to be 100 and it'll dynamically uh, render that. I can go say maybe to the next, um, 
I could jump around in the pagination so I can go from rows 1 to 10, 11 to 20. I can also export the data using JetBrains um, IDE exports. So if you've ever exported data from like a SQL table, it's the same export here. So it's pretty powerful. You know, for example, I could uh, download the data as a file and I could, you know, do a column header and tell it that I want it to be a TSV file. So all of these exports are really clean and really nice. I really love this feature. Um, over here in this uh, in this pane, I believe it'll show documentation. Maybe I will come back to that. I'm sorry, I forgot that I didn't have this scientific mode on. So you want to turn this scientific mode on to really when you're working with um, notebooks and Python, IPython. Um, so the scientific mode will show me documentation. So if I highlight read CSV, um, it'll go in and it'll extract the like doc string and signature from the pandas library. And this is just a nice quick little feature that prevents you from having to go out to the web. Maybe it saves you a few seconds here. You could just click around and it'll introspect your packages and try to like uh, show you uh, good things about them. Uh, I can also use, you know, keyboard shortcuts like to create a variable um, or to autocomplete, which is a really nice feature. So let's just say I wanted to plot two columns. Um, I can use the autocomplete uh, so the keyboard shortcut is control uh, control space and it's actually introspecting the names of the column on the data frame which is pretty cool and maybe I want to create a variable so I'm going to do control V and um, we would make this variable, you know, my plot. So anyway, I'm going to run that and it's going to plot the uh, the line plot right here in line. Uh, embedded it just like you would expect for a Jupyter Notebook. Another thing I really like is uh, how it'll pick up on typos. So in this uh, copy pasted code here, I have an intentional typo unresolved reference NP. I could have also come down to this problems pane and it'll show me all the issues with the notebook. I can also apply PEP formatting with control L. Um, so immediately it styles the cell. These are all me leveraging like shortcuts in PyCharm that may not be available in the notebook. Uh, another one would be like optimizing unused imports. So if I imported daytime and it was unused, I can do First, it's going to tell me that. Then I can do Control uh, O to remove that. Now, the most killer feature, in my opinion, is the live debugger. Um, and to my knowledge, this isn't available in vanilla Jupyter. But what I can do is I can click, uh, click the bug cell and set a breakpoint. Um, Might be a bug here, so that's actually a good uh, good example. So maybe I um, put the breakpoint above, I debug the cell, and over here in the debugger tab, um, the line is now paused here, and I could see the value of my variables. So I could see the value of x, y, df. I can also pop open a an, ex, an expression evaluator, and I can run code against the state of the cell. So, you know, I could just, I could just see the value of N or run anything I wanted. And that's a really nice feature to be able to stop and execute code at a breakpoint. Um, and alternatively, instead of using this debugger at any given time, you can come into the Jupyter tab here and come into the variables uh, tab. And I guess this can't run when the cell is in the middle of executing. But what's nice about this variables tab is it'll show you all the defined variables in the notebook at any time. And if you've used notebooks, you know what can happen is you can run a cell, you know, at the top of your notebook. 15 minutes later, you're running cells in the middle of the notebook. 
you might have redefined a variable twice or overwritten a variable and you have to keep track in your head oh did i define x like 13 cells ago and if you're like me you always just start you'll just restart the kernel and run the notebook again this will show you all the variables in scope in the notebook at any given time so just for example if i restart the kernel So as it's restarting the kernel, um, I could see the console. So this would be like the, uh, the same kind of console you would have in the browser. So I've restarted the kernel and now that variables window is gone. So where if I were to come to the top and just run this one cell, the variables tab appears and you see now it only has the variables that were defined in the cell. So that's a super killer feature. Uh, now, the last thing I want to talk about isn't the notebook support per se, but it's very similar. Um, there is this scientific mode, the sci view. Um, and what's nice about this is just hide this documentation. If I'm running Python, just a script, you know, maybe I took this, uh, this lot, this uh, blurb from the, from the notebook and I put it into just a pure Python script. Um, so when I run this, uh, you know, where are the plots going to go? Now, if you've used vanilla Python, the plots just pop up in a window. What's cool about this is when I run it, <clears throat> the plots are going to appear on this plot pane. So this, this script generated two plots, so a line plot and a scatter plot. And there's a scatter plot. And I can look at them, at this pane, keeps track of them. And I can interact with them. I can save them. You know, do anything I would normally do with a plot, but it keeps them keeps them in order for me, which is, in my opinion, really cool. <clears throat> okay. So this last feature I wanted to show you is, let's say you're debugging. So I have just a little snippet here where I read in a data frame, and I have the data frame in memory here because um, I'm at a breakpoint. So in and of itself, that's cool. But if I click on this view as data frame, it'll actually render it in the side view data pane. And it'll color code it for numerical columns, which is really nice. So you can kind of visually just dump around, jump around the data really quickly. Um, you know, you can, I'm not super familiar with how this works, but I imagine I could like, I don't know, I could probably I could probably edit the data in real time. See, so I can tinker with the uh, the data frame. I could export it. Um, again, I can dr I could drill into the data frame here, and it's gonna show each column as a series. So again, I could pop open that series. So this is like really powerful because um, it's all just nicely integrated in the IDE. So yeah, that's just you know ten minutes of. PyCharm Jupyter integration. I'm sure there's way more that I don't know. But once I started doing this, I really never went back to running it in the browser. So let me know what you think. Are you going to try it out? Um, what are some cons? You know, I'm just seeing the pros. So yeah, anything uh, interesting, like I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you.